Hey guys, both Computex and Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference were happening today, so we're splitting Netlink into two. I'm covering the Apple news because apparently I'm the resident hipster and Jack's covering Computex. So click here for that video. All right, get out of here. Sennheiser Game Zero and Game One headsets feature German-engineered transducers and active noise-canceling microphones for precision gaming audio. Available now at ncix.com. As usual, Apple didn't use WWDC to reveal new iPhones, but there were some major announcements. First off, the company revealed OS X 10.10 Yosemite, except the last OS X was 10.9 Mavericks, and there was already a 10.1 Puma. Apple, go home, you're drunk. The OS update brings the flat design of iOS 7 to the desktop with translucent windows and retooled icons. The notification center has been updated to more closely resemble the Today view on iOS and will integrate with third-party app widgets while Spotlight has been redesigned to basically resemble the popular Alfred launcher. Revolutionary. The other big reveal today was iOS 8, bringing more software features than visual redesign. You can now finally download third-party keyboard apps like Swipe and SwiftKey, something that Apple has forbidden up to this point. The Messages app now supports Snapchat-like self-destructing audio and video messages, and you can remove yourself from group message threads if you're getting an overload of notifications. You'll be able to respond to text from the Notification Center and other apps directly from the lock screen, which is kind of cool, and inter-app communication will be improved with apps now being able to interact directly with each other, sort of like they've been able to do in Android for some time. One of the more interesting announcements is developments to AirDrop, a feature that was on both iOS devices and Macs, but which couldn't work with each other. But now it can! AirDrop is part of a new system called Continuity and allows your Apple devices to sense each other's presence over Wi-Fi and understand each other's feelings. Macs will connect to iPhones and allow you to call and text through the desktop, start a mobile hotspot, or send files back and forth simply by swiping using a tool called Handoff. Although that's not to be confused with iCloud Drive, Apple's new Dropbox-type document syncing and storage service that will work across OS X, iOS, and Windows. There was some buzz preceding the conference about Apple debuting a home automation service, and debut it they did. It's called HomeKit, and it's a way to control smart home devices through Siri. It will group devices so you can tell Siri, get ready for bed, and she'll dim the lights and start playing George Michael. HomeKit will have a certification program for device makers, and the club so far includes Philips, Honeywell, iHome, and a bunch more. Apple also announced HealthKit, a health tracking app that will sync with popular fitness wearables and third-party apps, and will also be able to send data to health clinics to help with doctor checkups. Lastly, Apple announced Swift, their new programming language for Coco and Coco Touch. I don't know what that is, but it sounds delicious. This is apparently huge news if you're an Apple developer, as it will allow more efficient coding, will allow coders to see the results of their programming in real time as they write, and will be able to run alongside its predecessor, Objective-C. Evidently, it's, it totally rules. Also, Siri can now identify songs if you ask her as part of a partnership with Shazam, so that's cool, and she can display words as you say them instead of waiting. Google now already did both those things, big whoop. Well, that's pretty much it for today's Apple news out of WWDC. If you want to win Watch Dogs, you have until Wednesday to comment on our gameplay video here. Click here if you want to see our roundup of today's Computech news. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. High five!